Dear John, I'll never forget the day we first met. My two-year-old had just hit her front teeth on the daycare radiator, and I needed help, stat. I'd heard about you and your dental practice from my mom's group friends, how everyone had a crush on you. <laughs> Clearly, they needed to get out more, I thought. But when you came into that exam room, your smock accenting your bright blue eyes, my knight in paper armor, I got it. <laughs> Every six months after that, you gave me a reason to care about my hair and to wear lipstick. <laughs> and when you turned to me on your wheelie stool, I sensed you inching a little bit closer. <laughs> but our attraction, it, it wasn't just about pretty enamel surfaces. We were intellectually simpatico. I broke the monotony of your questions about fruit roll-ups and gummy vitamins with witty, self-deprecating comments. And your eyes, they smiled above your mask in appreciation. <laughs> I imagined that you, just like me, wanted more than this vanilla existence filled with moms in Lululemon pants and, and their high-achieving kids. Maybe I didn't have a flawless ass or a perfect kid, but together I knew that we could rise above our predictable lives in a self-referential, ironic kind of way. <laughs> Even as we honored the rituals of good dental hygiene, the scraping, the flossing, the spitting. But then we hit a bumpy patch. My daughter had a major surgery, and after that, she lived in fear of doctors. Any medical appointment was hell. It took 30 minutes for her to work up the courage to let you do your work. There was crying, sometimes kicking, always bribes. And then one day, the spit really hit the fan. I was calling to set up an appointment, and your receptionist would only let us come in the morning during school hours. I had seen this woman make people cry for forgetting to bring their insurance cards. <laughs> and now she had her sadistic sights set on me. My daughter was a difficult patient, she informed me. She needed to be kept away from the normal children because she might scare them. When I insisted that she wasn't trying to make trouble, that she had a certifiable post-traumatic stress disorder, she told me, you have no choice. I hung up in a blind, shaking rage. No choice. No choice is watching your child be put under anesthesia, watching her cry when all the tubes get pulled out of her, watching her experience a kind of pain and fear that you have never known, and that you can't make better with a hug and a kiss. And once a mom's seen her baby go through a hell of nobody's choosing, you do not tell her that her kid is a problem and that she has no choice. I was raised to be pleasant and undemanding, to not rock the boat, but that was all off the table now. So I did something I'd never done before, John. I wrote a letter of complaint. I told you about how humiliated I'd felt, how I can't possibly be the first mother to have a child who's afraid of the dentist, and how even if I did need to bring her in during school hours to protect all the good little boys and girls from witnessing a little cold, hard reality, that bully at the front desk could have thrown me a little tiny crumb of sympathy. You're a pediatric dental practice, for God's sake. You're supposed to like people with kids. I didn't know if I could continue with things the way they were going, I wrote. It's not you. It's the receptionist. <laughs> it felt so good to be honest with you, John. I knew you would understand. But then two weeks later, got a certified letter from you. 
Certified. I actually had to sign for it in my bathrobe. You told me I should find another practice that you couldn't meet my needs anymore. Oh, God, John, after all we'd been through together, couldn't you at least have sent me a regular letter? Were we only talking to each other through our lawyers now? I guess I overestimated you. Looks like you do like plain old vanilla after all instead of Rocky Road. Do the marshmallows and the hard chocolate covered nuggets scare you, John? Are you afraid of what they're going to do to your enamel? Do you even get that I'm speaking metaphorically right now? <laughs> Goodbye, John. I hope your gums don't end up receding as easily as you have. <laughs> but I don't want you to worry about me. I'm fine. I did my research, and I found a pediatric dentist who can meet my needs and my daughters. See, that's what we moms do to protect our babies. We aren't afraid of making messes because life's messy. And sometimes we choose when it's time to spit. <laughs>